Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that we are here in the land of the living. It's all by His grace. His mercies endure forever. And He has opened the heavens and give us revelation. We understand in prophetic scriptures in a way that is very, very comprehensive. And you know what? Yesterday, I mean, the previous lesson, the Lord began a three or four part series on the personality called the Antichrist, shrouded in mystery. And over the years, religion has cast so much possibilities, but unfortunately, is almost often wide of the mark. And the reason is that in trying to point to people, religion is not able to explain what the Bible says about the environment that brings for this person, about the surrounding issues, the culture that produces this man of sin. We saw yesterday, you know, quite a, a comprehensive outlay. Today, the Lord will give us a additional light, and I urge you to just listen. Take all three or four parts of the series, and you're going to have a comprehensive picture that, you know, will make you fairly equipped for the times we are in. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to receive light from you and additional insight. We pray that your spirit will do the breakdown and you grant us the spirit of discernment and understanding. Thank you, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the nature of the kingdom uh, the Antichrist is going to preside over and some of the things that are being said in the Bible have been said in the Bible about him. We need to say up front, brothers and sisters, as mortals, we are mortal. We have finite mind. Our mind is limited. Trying to comprehend the deep things that are from the mind of the Father, explaining his word, we can only say 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9, but we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part, shall be done away. And so what we need to do is to posture like Daniel, who studied the scriptures prayerfully, and then by studying, the Lord gave him insight in what his contemporaries didn't know. He understood by books. The period of time when the prophecy of Jeremiah for the end of the captivity will be due. And you saw that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 1, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that will accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. What did he do when he understood? And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes, he began to pray. He began to stand in the gap. He didn't just say, well, I've known what is going to happen. No. Brothers and sisters, it is by study that we can comprehend certain things that will enable us to know the times we are in. The Bible makes it clear that between 550 to 600 years before Yeshua was incarnated, Elohim revealed in granular details things like where he will be born, the name he will be called, the kind of people that will be around him. Brothers and sisters, his incarnation, life and death were all revealed. Check the prophetic scriptures. If I, Yeshua came to fulfill what was written of him. And through revelation granted to Daniel, Elohim also revealed that there will be three world empires to precede his manifestation. There had been the Assyrian and the Egyptian empires, but from the days of Daniel, what he saw was Daniel saw the head of gold, he saw the chest and arms of silver, and he saw the belly and thigh, you know, which were bronze. The gold being the, Bukat, um, the Babylonian empire, the chest and arms of silver being the Persia, Medo Persian empire, and the thigh of bronze being the Greco Macedonian empire. Daniel also saw the empire that will be on earth when Yeshua comes, which is the Roman Empire, the, the feet of iron, the iron, no, sorry, the, the, the legs of iron, the legs of iron. And their men and brethren, 
Then in Daniel chapter 2, we see some very interesting things. Daniel was also given a picture of the environment, the type of kingdom or world empire that will be on earth when the Antichrist will be manifested. In other words, how would the earth look like by the time Yeshua will return? What type of world power will be on earth? Why is it important you understand this truth is that it will help you to truly know the times we are in. Remember, we are told about the sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, that they were men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And so, in Daniel 2, and I want to read it for you because this is one of the most obscure, religion has obscured it. But there you catch a revelation of this very text. You are good to go to understand the end times in a way you wouldn't have without this. And so, he now, Daniel began to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. He told him the dream, he, which he forgot. And he told him the dream in verse 26 of Daniel 2. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of king and said, The secret which the king have demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and make it known to the king, the Bukhazanazah, what shall be in the latter days. Hey, Elohim sways a past searching out. He chose a hidden king. One who he used as a executor of judgment against his own people, who sacked Jerusalem, carried away the king and all the nobles captive. The Lord chose to use him to bring out a revelation, but then which held the revelation from him, and he needed a wise man, a child of the Most High, and that's how Daniel came into the scene. And look at what he said to him. After he extolled the king, he said, listen, he said in verse 30, but as for me, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. You know, this was a man who was so proud. He, he always considered his legacy. What will I be known for? He built the hanging gardens of Babylon. He was a man who always was told, what will history remember him by? And so he had that inclination to know the future, and the Lord chose to give him the future much more than he bargained for. What was it? Verse 31. Thou, O king, sawest and beheld a great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, the breast and arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass. His legs of iron. Then listen, under that verse 33, part B, his feet, part of iron and part of clay, the feet, the feet with the toes. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon the feet and that, uh, that were of iron and clay and break him to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together became like the chaff of the summer thrashing floors, and the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, this is the dream that he brought the interpretation, and now told him in verse 36, this is the dream we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Verse 37, thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven had given thee a kingdom, power and mind, power and strength and glory. Wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, has he given unto your hand, and had made thee the ruler of them all. Thou, that is Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian Empire, thou art this head of gold. It gets interesting from there. And after thee, after the Babylonian Empire shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, gold, then silver. Silver is inferior to gold. And whereas Babylon was the Chaldeans, the next one will be the Medes and the Persians, inferior to gold. 
Okay, now, and another third kingdom of brass, Alexander the Great, his father Philip of Macedon, their kingdom was all the way to India. Shall be a rule over the earth, verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. That's the Roman Empire. The legs of iron, whenever they go to war, they stamp out everything. The Romans conquered all the way, the Western world, all the way to Britain. They crossed the English Channel, took over Britain, chased the people out. Then they went eastward, conquered Jerusalem, conquered the then known world. They stamp out everything before them, legs of iron. For as much as iron breaketh the pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Verse 41. This is the very critical one for us, you and I. It says in verse 41, and whereas. Thou sowest the feet and toes at the very base of the bean, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided and there shall be need the strength of the iron for as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with merry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sowest, I am mixed with merry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings, now this is very interesting. You wonder why Bible expositors would miss this very important statement about when Yeshua will return. And in the days of these kings, the very last one, it and toes of iron mixed with merry clay. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sowest that the stone was cut out, out of the mountain without hands, and that he breaketh in pieces the iron, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Brothers and sisters, this dream is so prescient, because just as Daniel saw, it happened. Babylonian Empire came and went. Middle Persian Empire came and went. Roman Empire came and went, but it was in the days of Roman Empire that Yeshua was incarnated. Now it tells us the empire that will be on earth when Yeshua will return to set up the kingdom of Elohim that shall not, you know, be shared with men. And he says it's going to be an empire described as feet and toes. The last human empire before the kingdom of Elohim, the manifest kingdom, is established and run by Yeshua himself. We got a very clear picture here. And in a companion study entitled Understanding the End Times, the Lord gave us an extensive revelation about the possibilities of this kingdom. We saw that it could mean the United Nations system, which the world established for itself in 1945, following World War II in San Francisco. But then, recent events have put United Nations by the side. Yes, it is feet and iron mixed with toes. You have all manner of religions, all manner of cultures, every people group represented. But now, it doesn't have the force of power to execute its will. We also saw that it could be the European Union, which truly is in the territory of the defunct Roman Empire. Because prophets of old used to say Roman Empire will be revived again. And so the eyes were always around Europe. And a lot of things speak for Europe. European Union is a mixed nation. Some countries came out of socialism. Some came out of democracy. Some came out of all kinds of cultures. They all mix together. They are not one block. Europeans are not one block. We have people from the barbarians, people from the Franks, people from the Visigoths. All these people now, one people, they can put together a military power. However, 
the level of cohesion to be able to run the world is not yet there. And that leads to the third option, which is very strange. So strange that prophets of end times do not even think about it at all. But it's like something hiding in plain sight. And what do we mean? A child of Europe, therefore, umbilically connected to the old Roman Empire that was said everybody agreed would be resurrected again. But a nation, which is truly a mixed multitude, even from the beginning, yes, Europeans, but you see, the British, the English, the Polish, Germans, French, Italians, Irish, played a major role. You know, people group, different people group came. Each one had his own little pocket. The French had Louisiana, had, you know, the areas. The Spanish had their own areas. And later the English maneuvered and outmaneuvered, played a major role. Brothers and sisters, United States of America is the most unlikely entity when you're thinking of the end time. So unlikely that the prophets will tell you about the Middle East. That's where the Antichrist will come from. They'll tell you about what it will come from in Europe. Even so powerful is the situation that some people were sent from uh, the United States in the last few years to go and plot the overthrow of Pope Francis, who has been deemed a liberal, a liberal pope. And the, whoever they are rooting for is a man to be watched. From a religious point of view, whoever they are rooting for, and the group that sent them are a group to watch for. But that's not what we're talking about. Now, all these European people came, the Native American tribes were pushed, pushed further down, and then they became dominant from Europe. And then when there was need for cheap labor for the plantations, millions of Africans were brought over as slaves. And later, their descendants have a place, 12% of America now. And then when there was need for railways to link north and south and length and breadth of America, Chinese were brought to do the railways, and after that, they settled down. Then the visa lottery system that has been run by the State Department over the years, almost every people group in America, they have a, a diaspora in America. I mean, every people group in the world, almost all, all religions, all peoples, they have a diaspora in America. The last Congress before this, maybe this one also, was the most diverse in history. People of all types were there. Different religions swore by their own gods, swore by their own holy books. So something is there, even so much to, you see, Republicans and Democrats hardly see on anything, hardly on anything. Foreign affairs, homeland issues, hardly agree. You have red states, blue states, you wonder, is it the same country? Yes, the same country. It's so big, it's so huge, it can take so much. Conservatives and liberals, always poor and rich. Mm. Class wars, male, female, young, old. Their diversity has been a strength, but in the last days, is breaking at the seams. Why is the Lord saying this to us? Though bitterly divided, it is still the only nation in the world with infrastructure to carry a world ruler. No other nation, no other nation. China is working hard, but China needs at least five, seven, ten years to match up. But China has made a quantum leap over the past 20 years. China has made an extraordinary leap. What are we saying? If all the things being said is anything to go by, if the end is coming in this time, the only entity that fits into the framework of what empire will be on earth when Yeshua will return is the United States of America. No other. It is world leader, culture leader, fashion leader. Anybody you have an iPad somewhere, 
America. You have an iPhone somewhere, America. You wear jeans anywhere, America. Everybody, you ride certain cars anywhere in the world, America. This is the world empire. Yes, the people, they think very little of it, but the truth on the ground, there's no nation that has military command across the world, bases across the world that are good to go in any war, any crisis that has the kind of power, economic power, political power, social power, eh, the cultural leader of the world. When America sneezes, the world catches cold. The Treasury Secretary can sign a simple paper and somebody somewhere, a business somewhere closes down. Economy of a country shuts down or begins to tether no matter how strong they are. I mean, Treasury Secretary. You know what? The Secretary of State can say something, recommend, and that is it. An entity is deemed to be a terrorist entity and is cut off from the world system. It is so strange that is it that Satan has made it that we are not even thinking of something that may play a more significant role? So why is this thing? Why are we not to learn these things? Why do we need to know these things? What it now means is that when the time comes, unless there is a major dislocation that happens globally, and it is possible, if the time is not now, yes, China may rise. Other nations may rise. But if it is within this time frame, for any reason, that the Lord says the end is come, there is no other nation where these things we are talking about, leading the world, can happen. Why is it important? Because the infrastructure for the man of sin can only be what can sustain world rulership. Media. Media. Space. Anything you can think of. It has to be something already on the ground. In other words, when the man of sin, the time comes, he's going to step into an infrastructure that is already there for world rulership. It's not something he's going to start creating. And that's enough. So we are told, Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Yeshua and make no provision for the flesh to fill the loss thereof. And brothers and sisters, it is important that we wake up from sleep. Possible modes of manifestation of the Antichrist. One as a son of perdition. In other words, somebody created for that purpose. As we said yesterday, just like Judas Iscariot created for that purpose, John 17, 12, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, is called their son. Judas was called son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, Paul says, son of perdition. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, one, be revealed. Two, he calls him the son of perdition. Three, number two, as the outcome of seduction, or temptation by Satan. You see, Satan took away the rulership of this world from Adam and Eve by offering them shiny objects, and they took it. So it is possible that the enemy will offer somebody, the right person, I'm going to make you world ruler, because the Antichrist will be world ruler. And the person can fall for that if he has a desire for power. And then, Number three, necessity. It is possible that the person who will receive this very offer from Satan will need it to survive the onslaught of political enemies and there will be so much after him to destroy him, so much that in the debate to overcome whatever is offered to him in the secret, nobody may know, not even the closest associate, not even spouse will know, and this person would receive that offer in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. He seat, his power, his authority. Nobody knows. Number four, it could be opportunity. That the disorder on the earth, when the, when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Yeshua are raised up, and those alive are raptured up with the disorder on earth, the confusion, the confusion on earth, the chaos on earth. War rulers, and you can go and pull them 
even today, you can go and poll world leaders. If anything, crisis globally happens and we need to get around and behind somebody, who would it be? It would be an interesting opinion poll. Who would it be? You go and ask President Xi Jinping, who would it be? We ask uh, President Vladimir Putin, who will it be? You ask the British Prime Minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, who will it be? Who, would you, who do you think can hold the world together? You ask North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, who will it be? You ask Narendra Modi of India, who will it be? I'm talking about the strong men of the world. You ask Ayotala Khomeini, the, the leader of, of Iran, who should keep the world together even if there's chaos. Brothers and sisters, you have no idea the chaos that will come upon the earth. The first resurrection, graves open in unlikely places, places where people have died for three, four, five hundred years, for two thousand years and buried, and these graves are popping open and bodies are coming out and changing, and those who are alive are flying off from aircraft, from uh, cars, from space stations. It's going to be utter confusion. And so the world will like to preserve itself. And they are likely to get behind somebody who has been projected as a solver, a problem solver, a solution provider. And so that opportunity could be there. Men and brethren, listen to this. I quoted yesterday what bon, ChristBonservant.org attributed to a man. Look at what he said. Dr. Henry, Dr. Paul Henry Spark, former Secretary General of NATO, and the first president of the United Nations General Assembly and an architect of the United Nations at the New World Order said, after the World War, they looked at the carnage in Europe and across the world. How could the most intelligent homo sapiens on ever known in history slaughter each other like this? And look at what he said. We do not want another committee. We have too many already. What we want is a man of sufficient stature to hold the allegiance of all people and to lift us out of the economic morals into which we are sinking. Send us such a man, and be he God or the devil, we will receive him. <laughs> That's interesting. Brothers and sisters, with all that we are seeing, extreme terrorism, everything we are seeing, the world is at the place where it is likely to need a man. Act of necessity when the events of the end time begin to happen. Now, when you have time, read Daniel chapter 7 and see some profound things written from verse 7 all the way to verse 26. It's very profound. And, men and brethren, if you check them all, you see that an entity will arise out of the Roman Empire, out of the ashes of the Roman Empire to rule the world system. And, men and brethren, these things, the person who will emerge will have no regard for things holy, will be pompous in speech, a man of great elocution, with the ability to use words to great negative effect. Brothers and sisters, it's so important that this person will make war with the saints and will overcome saints, as written in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And this person is going to be a very powerful personality. Men and brethren, he seek to put in place new laws which will alter how people live and seek to change times. And it's very important that we understand that though seemingly powerful, the Antichrist will ultimately be destroyed and placed where he belongs, the lake of fire and brimstone. Revelation 19 verse 20, the beast was taken. And with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he delivered, deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and then that worship his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The Antichrist is not a system. It's a person. It will be a person. Men and brethren, the false person will be a person. The Antichrist is likely to come from organized Christian religion, the Protestant variety, and the false prophet is likely to come from organized Christian religion, the Roman variety. These two will be a powerful toxic brew. A powerful combination. And brothers and sisters, the more you see what the Lord is saying it now, we just know that look, it's going to be a time the Lord is going to raise men and women who can see in the realm of the Spirit. Men and women who are rooted in the world, the Lord is going to raise them because they need to guide us. The Antichrist, speculations, 
are not helpful. You know, there have been speculations over the years. John McCain said it's Obama. Obama is him. Oh, people have said it was Reagan when he survived the assassination attempt. People have banded names over the years. Names, 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 names. But the Lord says, remember. While the Lord may reveal certain things, he may not tell anybody specifically that's a man. Why? For safety purposes. Because the system is not able to receive, even Christians are not able to receive this kind of truth. Why? Some Christians are entrenched in their own political and social battles and their cultural wars that the possibility it may come from their camp cannot register in them. But what is it we need to know? The Antichrist will only be known one day on cable, on social media, on internet, on mainstream media, television networks. One day something will happen. It's called the abomination that makes desolate spoken of by Daniel, affirmed by Yeshua, and explained by Paul. Daniel said in Daniel 9.27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's the peace treaty he'll make with Israel at the beginning when he will deceive them. And in the middle of the week, meaning about three and a half years from that day, when the Antichrist comes on the earth as a problem solver, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations, she shall make it desolate even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The abomination of desolation, which Daniel spoke about, was referenced by Yeshua in uh, Ma, um, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever read it, let him understand. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. The falling away of the church from the gospel of the kingdom will first happen, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And they went on to talk about him. In other words, listen to this. One day nobody knows. The trumpet sounds. The dead in Christ rise first. Those who are alive are raptured. The wise virgin church. Then what happens? In the midst of the chaos and confusion, the world will rally around a charismatic figure who will be the solution provider who will bring peace. And he will make peace, covenant with Israel. He will guarantee Israel peace. For those of you who don't know, there are two Israels. One is the illusory Israel that we Christians have been, you know, kind of we love to believe. The greatest power in the world, in the Middle East, very strong, very powerful, all that very holy land, all that. There's another Israel on the ground. That Israel, this October 7 issue, has brought it into a new state. It's an Israel that is now going to be dependent on America more than ever before. Forget all the theatrics. It's an Israel that needs protection and security because the Iran has surrounded it with surrogates, the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hamas, Islamic Jihad in, 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 in the Palestinian areas, and of course in Iraq too the various factions. Brothers and sisters, there's an Israel now that is getting closer to what was said in the Bible. Rebbe Benakim Schneerson, the founder of, uh, the late founder of the Chabad movement based in Brooklyn, was the man who prophesied to then uh, United Nations representative of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. He prophesied to him, you're going to be the next prime minister of Israel. And it happened. Then he lost election. It looks like this thing will happen again. Then he gained election again. Then he lost it again. And then he has come again. And the man told him something that we have never given attention. Rebbe Schneerson, the most outstanding Jewish leader of this generation, said to him, listen, you will be prime minister. You will be the one to hand over the mantle to the Messiah. It's there. Is there on film? Is there in? Is go to read Israel today, the newspapers, 
You see it there. So how were these things hidden? What does it mean? What, is there something the Lord wants us to see? Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to be in a place of posture, posture in prayer. Posture also in open. He said, watch and pray. He didn't say watch and watch, lest we just go into tattling. He also didn't say pray and pray, lest we, 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 we just pray and the sheep lands. He said, watch and pray. What we see should determine what we pray. And we should be able to govern our own lives. Make sure that there's nothing in us that stays more than a moment comes into your mind. Somebody says evil against you. You are tempted to be vengeful. You remember a man sound any moment. You release it to the Lord. You forgive. You don't keep any bitterness. You don't allow any anger to stay till evening. That kind of sharpness of life is what the Lord is saying to us. He's not going to talk ta 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 or who it is. No. It's if you have a nation, you are part of any nation, guard your nation in prayer. Stand on the gap. One of the prayers that the global prayer intercessors pray is that the Antichrist is hindered from manifestation until the day appointed. Because by the day appointed, nobody can stop him. Nobody can pray it out. It will surely come to pass. But the Lord is telling us all these things to help us to begin to live in a way that whether it happens in the day or in the night, we will certainly be on the right side of the Lord. By way of assignment, please describe the nature of the kingdom of world power that the Antichrist will take over as platform for ruling the world. Two, what are the four ways he can manifest? Three, cite some scriptures that speak of this personality. And may the Lord bless you, brothers. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. The Lord will keep us. The Lord will strengthen us. The Lord will enable us not to be so lighthearted that we, we just don't, we forget all the sobriety. These truths are in the Bible. There's one I'll be share with you. You will be so shocked. Is this thing there? It's there. A whole chapter that the Lord gave to John to show him how religion and politics will combine. Religion Will, will, will use politics to gain power and influence. Politics use religion to expand. At the end, when politics will destroy religion. And the politics is that Antichrist, at the head of a system that will use the church and dumb the church, the organized church, that is, the true church, of course, the Lord will get it out. And those who remain, who didn't go, who are not raptured, we've told you many times, don't commit suicide. If you Miss the rapture. Don't commit suicide. There is hope for you. Allah, allow them to kill you. Don't take the mark of the beast. They might burn you, whatever, but immediately your soul goes to heaven. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 15. And Revelation chapter 20 are very clear on this. There will be tribulation saints. So we live in an era where God is giving us more light than the generation before us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, just let your word do that which you propose. Your determinate counsel, let it prevail above everything we can think or ask. Lord, we surrender to you. None of us can stand without your grace. It's you who can uphold us from falling. Have your way and go ahead to uphold us, strengthen us with all might. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and 
with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of yeshua jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.